Opening the App Store on your brand new iPod was an incredible experience that can never be recreated. The list of games was so exciting and all of your real life responsibilities were immediately postponed so you could launch birds, jump on doodles, and of course, cut the rope. From time to time you spread some holiday cheer, you conducted a few experiments, maybe you even dabbled in time traveling, who can say? But no matter what happened, there was always a candy, there was always a monster, and there was always a rope waiting to be cut. I've always loved those original Cut the Rope games, but I really haven't kept up with the series since. There's a bunch of new mainline games, and who could forget the obligatory spin-offs each big mobile game series has received. So today I want to make up for lost time and find out what games are the best of the best as I rank every game in the Cut the Rope series. If you were like me, you thought there were 5 main games with a couple of spin-offs over the years. If you are a Cut the Rope historian, however, you know there are technically 33 games. Let me just say that again for you. 33! Now don't click out the video yet because here's what I'm doing. You're out of your god dang gourd if you think I'm going to do that right here right now. Every fully released Cut the Rope game and spin-off by Zeptolab is here on our list, and every yet to be unbelievable nightmare fuel made by a third party will not. I'd love to do a separate video on those too, if you'd like, but for now, forget them. Seriously though, the more I look into this, I think there's like way more than 30 games and no one is out here documenting each release. The research on this video has been insane. Okay, whatever. Our list is much shorter than that with just 8 mainline games and 7 spin-offs. That sounds much more doable. So we're going to go through the list in order of release, shuffling the spin-offs right in there between the big boys. That means our list for today includes Cut the Rope, Cut the Rope Holiday Gift, Cut the Rope Experiments, Omnom Candy Flick, Cut the Rope Time Travel, Cut the Rope 2, My Omnom, Cut the Rope Magic, Omnom Bubbles, Where's Omnom, Omnom Merge, Omnom Run, Cut the Rope Remastered, Cut the Rope Blast, and the newest title, Cut the Rope Daily. If you're curious, that one's a Netflix exclusive game. Don't know what that means? Me neither. How about we find out together? Without further ado, let's find out if Omnom really deserves that candy, or if we should keep it to ourselves while we binge watch Billy and Mandy. You're watching the paint dry? Shh, this is the best part. Ah, <sighs> I love this game. Wait, what? Shut up, I'm trying to play Cut for Cat. This, this is the wrong game? What the hell is this? Looks like a pretty crappy knockoff of Cut for Cat to me. The original Cut the Rope game was first released on either October 1st or October 4th of 2010. The internet seems conflicted about the exact dates each game was released on, so I'm going to simplify it down to just the month and year for each title. It was created by two Russian brothers under the publishing name Zeptolab. The word Zepto basically means crazy small, in reference to just how small this team of two brothers was. Despite being a small new company, they released their first game in a prime time of mobile gaming and, of course, saw instant success. 300 million downloads in the first year of release is a pretty insane feat. What prompted Cutthroat's unbelievable success? Well, the game is a pretty straightforward physics-based puzzle game, where your main goal is to feed the candy to our cute little freak of nature known by the name Omnom. Look everybody, it's our boy! It's really him! Anyways, as the title suggests, many levels revolved around you cutting a rope to get the candy to Omnom. There are plenty of added mechanics as the levels progress, such as spikes, spiders, records, rotating saws, and so on. You can also obtain three stars in every level, which is obviously only for the true intellectuals, such as myself. I was so shocked, but extremely excited that I still had the original Cut the Rope on my account. The version on App Stores now is updated, but man, I'm willing to bet nothing can beat the classic. Let's check this baby out. I now understand why they made a new version. Let's, uh, let's just go back to that one, shall we? Since this is the first game and it is so awesome and nostalgic, I want to do the deepest dive on it. It also meant playing through the whole game and, hey, why not get three stars on every level while I'm at it? I beat this whole game in just a few hours, so while there are a ton of levels to go through, it isn't too grueling of an experience. The first game's focus is all about these boxes, and each box has a different theme and key mechanic to try out. I want to showcase each box and what makes them unique. There are only 17, so it'll go quick, I swear. First up is the cardboard box that acts as the tutorial and mostly focuses on ropes, bubbles, and spikes. Next up is the fabric box with the air cushions, a mechanic still used to this day. Then the foil box gives us a slidable rope hook, and the magic box abruptly has magician hats that teleport you between them. The last box of season 1 is the valentine's box, and it features one of the craziest new mechanics. Your candy is now split in half, and both pieces have to be combined before Omnom will eat them. 
definitely changes up the way you think about the game, and is a genius idea for a puzzle game like this. Season 2 starts with the toy box, with some bouncy pads, pretty straightforward. Then the gift box has a wheel allowing you to change the length of rope. The cosmic box gave you a gravity button, which also makes for some insane levels. And the toolbox has some rotating saws to avoid. The final box of the season is the buzz box, obviously featuring some bees who move items around on a path. The final season features 7 boxes in total, and the difficulty definitely starts to ramp up here. The DJ box is one of my favorites, as this record you spin has tons of unique abilities. You can transfer things from one disc to another, and that's just really fun to play around with. Then the spooky box has a ghost, with the ability to swap between two items. Again, there are so many crazy uses of this you would never expect on a first playthrough. The steam box is more straightforward, with these valves allowing you to control some steam. The lantern box features, well, lanterns, that can teleport candy in between each one on screen. The cheese box, one of my least favorites, has a little mouse that grabs your candy and brings it to a different hole. The penultimate box is the pillow box. This one is pretty unique too. A brand new item, this lantern, is the only way to wake up Omnom, as well as every star on the stage, so it has to be close enough to the candy to beat each level. I'd say this was the most difficult box in the game for me personally, but it's still a great idea. The final box is just called Mechanical, I guess, and even though its title is The Hardest One, I'd argue not so much. You have a lot more control with this movable conveyor belt, but you should have a big enough brain by the end to get through it. We watch our nice little Candy Mountain cutscene at the end, and we've just beaten the entirety of the first game. It was genuinely a blast, and it's always gratifying to know a game you loved as a kid was actually good and not just nostalgic. Now before we slap this one in S tier, the last thing I gotta mention is, these games are a nightmare in present day. Seriously, the only way to play without losing your mind is to go into your settings and turning off your Wi-Fi first. I don't think I've seen a game have quite so many ads as the cut the rope games do. Obviously a lot of mobile games are like this today, but it is something to keep in mind. Not to mention this outrageous VIP membership bullcrap they have in every game now. Sure, unlocking everything and having no ads or microtransactions is great, but not only is $10 pretty steep, but it's a monthly subscription. Just who do you think you are? Don't even get me started on the weekly subscription they offer on Cut the Rope 2. Little children are wasting their parents' money on a subscription service for Cut the Freaking Rope. No matter how good your game is, it ain't worth that. That's all I'm going to say about that. Let's look at Cut the Rope from a better perspective. An incredible puzzle game with hundreds of levels and constant new challenges makes for one of the best mobile games of all time and places it at an easy S tier for our tier list. That was a long one. Let's move on. Zeptilab was quick to follow up on their instant success with a sequel only two months after the original. Sequel is a pretty generous term, however, since it is simply a holiday level pack. It's an extension of the original game, but with new mechanics and levels. I also had this game on my account, but it doesn't exist anymore. Life's just not fair, is it? I can't even play Cut the Rope Holiday Gift anymore. I guess it's time to get out the old noose and- No wait, cut that rope! I can play it on Blue Stacks. Huh, <sighs> that was a close one. This game was weirdly only available in December for a few years, which seems strange, but I suppose it really puts you in the holiday spirit, huh? If you loved the first game and couldn't wait for more levels, this game was awesome. Keep in mind though, this is literally just one box. That's the whole game. There aren't new mechanics either, but thankfully the levels are at least unique. Now I wanted so badly to 3 star these 25 levels, but the dang game crashed every time there was a bubble and an air cushion and just something was preventing me from doing so. I totally was smart enough to do it. I was! Now my gamer cred is flushed down the toilet, thanks Om Nom! I believe the point of this game is that the original cost 99 cents, and this was basically a free trial. So as a free trial, it's great. But as a cut the rope game, it's a C. It's charming and the music is nice, so I won't say D. Not like it was bad or something. Next up was Cut the Rope Experiments. It came out in August of 2011, nearly a year after the original. Keep in mind that game was constantly updated too, so they were just really making more levels than ever before. Experiments isn't a sequel, but it isn't a spin-off either. This one is really comparable to something like Angry Birds Seasons. There are a bunch of new mechanics and levels, but it is nothing more than an extension of the original. But we love the original, so let's see if this one is anywhere as good. Boxes are gone and each level is now part of a general pack. There's still a theme and sets of mechanic for each one, and there's only 8, so we'll go through them quick. Getting started is all about the basics, reacquainting you with the returning mechanics of the original game. Then shooting the candy is much less graphic than it sounds, as you stick a plunger to the candy to create new ropes. Definitely one of the coolest new features. Then Sticky Steps gives us the suction cup. Definitely one of the most frustrating features. And Rocket Science gives us rockets. There are tons of different uses as they can spin on a rope, be dropped on, and you can even change the direction of some. 
Then, of course, Cutthroat Up just had to have a water level. I have always hated water levels, and this game only adds to my frustration. I gotta say, the Mario Underwater theme combined with the Cutthroat Up theme was a really nice surprise as I played. The water itself is its own mechanic, but the snails also drag you down, almost like the opposite of a bubble. Handy Candy has these robotic hands, sometimes with multiple points of articulation, generally one of my favorite mechanics in the entirety of the series. Another fun one is Ant Hill. We got bees in the first one, and now the ants are jealous. But with the sciency theme, an ant farm is pretty perfect. They carry your candy wherever you'd like it to go. The final level is Bamboo Shoots, and while it's sad that it doesn't really act as a finale like the Mechanical Bots did for the first one, it is still enjoyable. It seems like this game just kind of stopped getting updated rather than actually getting a conclusion, which sucks, but hey, as the second mainline cut the rope game, this one was a blast. No other mobile game series had a game quite like Experiments, and that's really cool to me. What differentiates the mechanics in this one from the first one is, well, as I've been saying, the more scientific feel to it. But you also have a lot more control over each level. My brain had to work a lot harder than it had before, so I appreciate the challenge after mastering the first one. At some point they added this lies mechanic, which for the most part was never an issue, but for kids who are playing levels over and over again, it really sucked. Thankfully the game didn't always have lives, so we don't have to take that into account for a ranking. The game is either a very high A, or just barely reaching S. I think the main things to note are that there are way less levels and mechanics than the first one, despite them all being super fun. Well, until the water levels, which, again, I really didn't like. I love this game a lot, and it was a ton of fun, but compared to my favorite Cut the Rope games, I'm sadly putting it in A tier. So close. Now we move on to the first ever Cut the Rope spin-off. Om Nom Candy Flick was released on January of 2013, which is more than a year after experiments. The next mainline game, Cut the Rope Time Travel, would release in a few months though, so we can look forward to that once we pass this speed bump. As an avid Omnom fan, I of course had this game, so I can still install it and play it today, despite it being removed a long time ago. And as you can see, it works just as intended. It's a pretty early AR game where you fling candy to Omnom and try to get the best score you can. For some reason the camera is working, but it doesn't show on screen, so Omnom is just trapped in this ominous void as I try to fling candy to him over my laptop. I thought you might want to see just how ridiculous I look trying to do this, so here you go. This is hardly a game, and even if it did work, I wouldn't be impressed. Sorry, Om Nom. D tier. Also, I'm leaving you in this void for eternity, so have fun starving to death, loser. Well, <laughs> it's about time. Seriously, what the heck took so long? If you love Cut the Rope, you definitely love Cut the Rope Time Travel. The game released in April of 2013 ended up with more level packs than Experiments did. Keep in mind, though, these are packs of 15 levels, not 25. This game just looks so good. The polish they put on the original game's art style makes every world so nice to look at. Anyways, I completely three-starred this one, too. I guess I'm 100%ing the whole series now, great! But yeah, if that isn't an indicator for how much I love this game, I don't know what is. The main mechanic of time travel is each level features Omnom and one of his ancestors. You have two candies that must be fed to both monsters in order to beat the level. Otherwise, each world has a new mechanic to introduce, like always, so we gotta go through them. First up is the Middle Ages, with their first ancestor, Sir Omnom, of course. Other than the returning mechanics, there's now a chain that can only be broken by blades. Then we meet up with Nam Vinky in the Renaissance and gain the ability to freeze time. God, this game is so cool. The pirate ship appropriately has Captain Candybeard and BOMBS? <laughs> How does my candy break on spikes but bounce off of actual TNT? Anyways, my mummy is calling me, I gotta go to ancient Egypt. Here the candies are synced, so you control both of their movements at once. My big fat Greek wedding is starting, and now we must push a button to switch between the Nam boys. Plus, portals are introduced. I guess magician hats were too cliche, huh? I will fight anyone who said that the caveman Omnom from the Stone Age is not the best Nom boy. He just is. Also, why does he sound like me from the very special movie? <laughs> he gets a spinny wheel that changes the objects on screen. Who could forget the disco era with that afro look in Nom boy? And the laser and disco ball, one of my favorite mechanics in the game. Moving to the Wild West with Sheriff Omnom, I once again remind you that I hate Wild West settings, but being able to lasso your candies together at any time made it all better. Then the Asian Dynasty was a little weird, as these fans care about objects you can bypass them. Still, definitely fun. Then the Industrial Age, which is deemed the hardest one, and yeah, I'd agree. The candy is magnetized, and Omnom Chaplin is getting hungry. Didn't care for the set of levels too much. The Future is our last new era, where one candy is tied to the movements of future Omnom. I liked it, but it was very similar to the Egyptian one. 
The last pack jumbles everyone together for a few more combinations of mechanics, and then we claim our crown of victory. I am the king of cut the rope right now. I three starred the first three games in like two days. Not only does every level's theme make it more exciting than the last, but a new gameplay element each time makes me so excited to play through it. Plus these were some of the coolest additions to the series so far, in my opinion. This game is really good and better than the first in a lot of ways, and it's definitely the most challenging one so far. I am more than happy to put this one in S tier. Cut the Rope 2 came out at the end of 2013, and I know what you're thinking. Two? Isn't this like number five already? Yeah, Zepta Lab was feeling ambitious, I guess, or maybe they just didn't know what to call this one, who knows. Either way, this is the official sequel to Cut the Rope. How does it compare, and is it a worthy sequel? Well, I have touched on this game already in my mobile game sequels video, wink wink nudge nudge, but back then I'd only gone through three areas or so. Now I've beat the game, so I have a much better perspective on it. As always, they've added a lot more to do, and a lot more ways to do it. Omnom can move for the first time ever. Guess he finally realized he could just get the freaking candy himself, stupid glutton. But each area introduces a brand new member of the cast to help you along your journey. Of course, I'm going to go through them for you right now. Roto shows up first, and he's really glorified B from the buzz box in the first game. Still, he's cool, I guess. Then we have Lick, who can use his tongue to create temporary surfaces. What a cutie. He's constantly licking like dirt and shit, though, just saying. My main man Blue is up next. Coincidentally, my favorite flavor is also my favorite non boy. Just listen to him. Bum, bum, bum. Bombs? Then Toss has a little spring in her step, pretty straightforward. Boo is my favorite edgelord, though, and he loves scaring Omnom more than anything. Serves Omnom right, get your own damn candy next time. Snailbrow is, well, a snail, and he moves along the platform to push or hold your stuff. Finally, the last character is Ginger, who is basically a kamikaze flame that sacrifices itself to burn one piece of wood for you. Huh, I love sacrificing my friends. The non-boys are the main additions, so I won't go too more in depth than that. Each level not only had three stars, but two extra challenges. I will absolutely not be collecting every medal. Don't even get me started on those stupid fruit levels. It requires you to touch as much of the stage as you can and still get the candy to Omnom, and they are insanely frustrating, to say the least. I do however like the other challenges, which is usually beating the level in a certain amount of time or under a condition like collect zero stars. It's a new way to think about the levels, and I like it a lot. The other big thing is the energy system, which I believe has been there from the start. Puzzle games are just the worst game to have energy because experimenting and trying new things is harder to do when you have a limited amount of tries. It feels like you should just move on or get one star because otherwise you wouldn't have any tries left. It sucks, but that's just how mobile games work these days, I guess. As a puzzle game, Cut the Rope 2 is a pretty good time, but as a Cut the Rope game, compared to the other games, this one definitely pales in comparison. It really isn't bad, and there's a lot of great levels, but after spending a couple weeks playing through the entire game, I don't want to play it ever again. Just recording clips for this was a slog. I gotta give it a B. While I continue to update each Cut the Rope game for the next year, in December of 2014, we got our second spinoff, My Omnom. Loading up for the first time, it looks so clean and polished, and you just can't wait to- OH MY GOD! I think this might be the first time they tried using 3D. Well, it's all about taking care of your own little Omnom, or Omnel. I think little kids all think Omnel is cute or something because I uploaded some random video on Cut the Rope Remastered and put her in the thumbnail and it got thousands of views. Stop being creeps, kids! Anyway, she's my slave now. I just played Poe for the first time a little while ago, and this is virtually the same idea. Dress up your Omnom, feed it and take care of it, and of course, play mini games. Except there's literally only three games. Poe had like 300. I will say, I am pretty good at memory. Now, where did that damn banana go? I'm thinking this one. All right, it's a little tricky. Here's my second guess. Okay, I'm bound to get it. Erm, erm, awkward, am I right? Like, erm, <laughs> erm. Anyways, I got it now. Okay, I'm stupid, you got me! At least by process of elimination, I... I wanna play another game now. I'm sure little kids adore this game, and it seems cute enough, but Poe is cute too, and that thing could entertain a child until they graduate from college, just saying. Not as bad as the last spinoff, so I'll let it go in C tier. Finally, back to the good stuff. Sadly though, this is really the last mainline cut the rope game. It sucks, I know, but hopefully we can at least go out on a high note. This released a whole year after my Omnom in December of 2015, and right away you can see they went for a whole new style from before. Still sticking with 2D, but with much more detail and a lineless style that's really quite nice. I'll always be partial to the original style, but still, I like it. 
You might be wondering what the magic subtitle is referring to, and it turns out that Omnom is actually magic. And the world around him, I guess. But just wait till you see what he can do. Omnom shapeshifts into a bunch of different animals, and also, I guess he dies sometimes and turns into a ghost. But he's magic, so it's fine, it's fine. As per usual, let's go through each of the levels and see what's new and who these new Nomboys are. The first chapter is called the Sky Castle, and it gives us a little tutorial before we learn about Bird. Sally, that bird isn't looking very angry, so it'll never make the list! But Bird allows Omnom to fly, making him mobile in the air or just able to go up in general. Simple enough. This game also has boss fights, where the evil magic spider tries to eat your candy before you do. Fun idea. Next up is Mushroom Land with... Aw, oh, little baby Omnom. For the rest of the video, I talk like this now. Get used to it, freak! Baby Omnom can fit into Whittle Quacks and is small enough to get into bubbles and stuff. Aw, he's so cute. I love him. Be careful of this wava. Then we got a rat, a big fat stinky rat. He's part of the magic force and his ability is to cook. Anyone can cook. Oh, sorry, wrong franchise, my bad. The candy turns to cheese and he chases it down at all costs. Somehow the stupid smelly ugly rat is actually not ugly at all and insanely cute. This chapter also introduces these rocks you can cut through with your finger. I honestly really dislike every level with it in it. That's probably just a personal thing, but I feel like it gives you a whole lot of control and a lot more options and mistakes to make than most other levels do. Again, I'm sure that's just a me thing, but I had to mention it. The Mystery Cave brings back water levels once again, but thankfully they're pretty enjoyable here. Plus we get Fish, who swims straight down. And candy with legs? Omnom lives for the hunt now, I guess. In the Ancient Library, you get to kill Omnom over and over again so objects can pass through him. It's pretty similar to the paper fans from Time Travel, but I like it. The game's first update brought us the dragon in the stone temple. Maybe he breathes fire? Or glides across the screen with his wings? Uh, no. Actually, he sneezes. It makes sense, but I wish he breathed fire. Just saying. The tree village gives us Lizard, who's a lot like Lick from Cutthroat 2. They just really love licking everything now, not just the dirty, diarrhea-covered walls. The final chapter of this game is the snowy hills, which is sadly just a Christmas-themed area with no new abilities or mechanics. While I'd normally be hyped for more levels, there's a lot, and I've got a lot more games to play, so I'm gonna call it quits here. I love this game so much. It really feels like a modern version of the old game, and that magic title feels super fitting after playing through it. I was consistently impressed with the puzzles and ideas, and I feel like this is the perfect combination of the old mechanics, new additions from Cutthroat 2, and of course the new characters Omnom can shift into. No more stupid fruit medals, thank god. Going back to the basics makes each level much more enjoyable, quite frankly. I don't have to think about wasting my energy retrying the level over and over again. And no energy system, I almost forgot. I can finally replay these levels again and again without the viewer having to wait a few hours to try again. How incredible is that? The other paid versions of Cutthroat games all have ads, but not this one. I can finally leave my Wi-Fi on in freaking peace. As the current finale of the main Cutthroat series, I am honestly very happy with the conclusion. Before playing, I assumed it would be A, but no, this is definitely S tier. I have no idea if this is true or not, but according to multiple sites, Omnom Bubbles came out two days after Magic came out? Seems weird, but hey, who knows? What's even stranger is the game was removed from all app stores for a while, and then re-released in 2021. Like, huh? I don't really understand that either, especially considering it wasn't released on app stores again, it's just on a bunch of random websites. Anyways, this is the first of a long line of spin-offs to go through, so let's do this. This is your usual bubble mobile game. Every big franchise has seemingly decided they should make a game in the style despite having absolutely nothing to do with it. And Cut the Rope is maybe... <laughs> I wrote, and Cut the Rope is maybe makes the least sense. Yeah, that sentence is maybe makes the least sense, idiot. And Cut the Rope maybe makes the least sense in this genre. Unlike most of these games though, you are going for high scores, not completing levels. There are a few things I like about it, and the main one is the narrator. I love how he says, crazy. crazy. And it's also cool to be able to level up. It gives you a reason to play this game. Except, not really. This game is dog dookie. D tier. Where's Omnom was Cutthroat's first take on a VR game back in 2017, although it did release on Android in 2019. Weirdly, never came out on Apple, and I'm not really sure why. Anyways, I do want to note, other than this game, no Cutthroat games released from 2016 to late 2019. There has been an explosion in games after that, but let's wait on that and play Where's Omnom first. Now, I promise I tried very hard to get this game to work, but I couldn't. And there's literally just like one gameplay video on YouTube, so sorry, not sorry. It's honestly a pretty cool hidden object game, in VR especially, trying to spot Omnom in these big areas. 
without getting to play it, I'm not sure how in-depth it gets or just how enjoyable or unenjoyable it is, but the guy we're watching play it seems like he likes it a lot. <laughs> I love this game. Fair play, this bit is shit. <laughs> well, he mostly likes it, I guess. It seems fine and I don't want to be mean to a game I haven't played, so it's going in B. We move on to Omnom Merge, which released in 2019. After this just incredible cutscene, we see this is an idle game with elements of games like Dragon City. Rather than waiting for monsters to breed and hatch, which I despise, this game opts to just automatically merge each character. It kinda feels like 2048 in a way. Same numbers means you can make a new child. Lots of the Namis from Cutthroat Up 2 are here, like Blue, Lick, and Do. What the freak is a do? Oh, get that off my screen now! Before we move further, I've been duped and so have all of you because there is a hatching part of this game as well. Thankfully it's not the whole game, but still, I hate this crap. Despite this being mindless and pretty low quality overall, it is somewhat addicting. I'm not gonna lie, I might open this thing when I'm bored in class. There's no way I'm putting it higher than C though, and it's mostly your fault, do. I made a video on this game when it came out in 2020, and it got over 100,000 views, so uh, yeah, I'm basically an expert in this game. Wait, what are you doing? Stop watching! Don't watch this part! Stop! Okay, maybe I should relearn this game with all of you. Played Subway Surfers? Yeah, so this is Omnom, but Subway Surfers. Big freaking whoop. This one is also very character based, and playing as your faves or someone who just looks really cool might be enough to get you interested. Remember when Omnom literally couldn't move? It's pretty strange to go from that to Omnom jumping on trains. Also, what the hell is this dance he does at the end? What is that? I also got to discover this Fall Guys-esque battle royale with 100 quote unquote players, which on paper sounds kind of fun, but it is so, so bad. Last thing I wanted to show is my brand new OC Vinny Vic. Please send me your Vinny Vic fan art. And then my new, new OC, Iggy Tessie. Oh, don't even forget about my self-insert character, Am Def. He has a little trouble hearing. Actually, this character creator might be its one redeeming quality. Pex Jiffy is just looking incredible. Alright, we've had our fun. Definitely a D tier. Apple Arcade has gotten the opportunity to feature many remastered versions of old games, and two of the most popular ones have unsurprisingly been Angry Birds Reloaded and Cut the Rope Remastered. If you aren't familiar, Apple Arcade is a subscription service, and for $5 a month, you have access to a ton of games with no ads or microtransactions. I like it quite a bit, but that's not what we're here to discuss. Cut the Rope Remastered released in April of 2021, and originally featured five books of remastered levels from the five main Cut the Rope games. The Original, Experiments, Time Travel, Cut the Rope 2, and Magic. Each pack featured 25 levels from the original games, but with updated graphics. I really love the new backgrounds, especially the original cardboard box, but I also really like the candy, stars, and objects. However, Omnom looks... well, he looks bad, in, in my opinion. One addition to the typical formula is two new characters. Omnel works exactly the same, but her power-up ability uses teleporters rather than Omnom's magnet. The other new character is none other than... <gasps> Baby Omnom?! Oh, Omnom, you dirty devil! Guys! I think Omnom had sex! His levels are a little different and he demands three candies rather than one. You greedy baby! I want to do a little side by side of each book and their original levels and thankfully the channel Ultra Spicy Bro has made an incredible and very helpful video on that exact topic. If you want to see every comparison you should definitely check this video out. Anyways, the book Evan's Home only features levels from Cardboard Box, Fabric Box, and Valentine's Box. These levels are all insanely easy but it is the first one so let's keep that in mind. Something I hate is that Experiments starts off with levels from the toy box, not actual levels from Experiments. There are also multiple examples of levels being simplified, like Spike's not appearing in this one. It only gets worse from there, as time travel only features three worlds in their mechanics. It's understandable, considering with a limited amount of levels, you don't want to introduce a crazy amount of mechanics. But this is just a poor representation of that game then. And what have you done to my caveman boy? You couldn't possibly make a new model, could you? It just has to be the original one with a bone, or regular Omnom with a helmet. Just disgraceful. Then Cutthroat 2, known as Road Trip, uses these fake cutout backgrounds rather than the actually pretty and well-made ones they had previously. Great job making Remaster look worse than the originals at the lab. Again, we only get to see Lick and Blue rather than the whole Nami group from the original game. You couldn't even add Roto? I can't believe that. Magic actually translates the best in this style, considering they just have a similar look. Magic was 2D, but the lineless art is pretty close to this remaster. It still looks worse, but you know, it's close at least. The same problem as always is they chose the bird, and really enough the lizard, as transformations. I would have guessed like the fish or the baby Omnom power would return, considering they already made that model for Nibble Nom, but at least those lizard levels are some of the more fun ones from that game. The main takeaway from all of this is, 
Not only are these horrible representations of the games they are based on, mostly due to the lack of new features added, but all the challenge has been removed. It is clear Zeptolab is transitioning the series to kids only, if that wasn't clear already, but it just makes this remaster a downgrade, not to mention the worst graphics in nearly every instance. Thankfully they have since begun to add new levels and or remaster a few that hadn't already. I played through a couple and some are alright, but most have the same issues I've already discussed here. Finally they have a feature where you roll a dice and walk in a circle. I've never been more entertained in my life, honestly! This game is a hollow husk of the Cutthroat Up series. I'd say the same for Angry Birds Reloaded too, but that's a whole can of worms for another time. After playing through the full versions of these games back to back, this one is just not good. I was originally thinking it was a B tier, but truthfully it deserves a C tier at best. Thankfully this is our last spinoff, and if you just had to guess what genre Cutthroat Up has yet to emulate, I'm willing to bet you guessed correctly. Cutthroat Up Blast released in December of 2021, and I wanted to give this game as much time and attention as everything else on here, but what am I even supposed to talk about here? This is one of the most cut and dry, lifeless, painfully boring mobile games I've ever forced myself to play. I got to level 10, is that enough? Can I be put out of my misery now? Thank god. It sounds like this I wish I decided to include F tier because oh boy does this deserve it. Last and potentially least, we have Cut the Rope Daily, released just a couple of months ago on August 1st of this year. It is a Netflix game, and if you're like me, you have no idea what that means. Well, when you want to play a Netflix game, you have to open Netflix, search for Cut the Rope, and download it. Then you have to log into Netflix on your new game that you just downloaded from Netflix, and you get to finally play their stinky game. Cut the Rope Daily is an attempt to translate the series into a game like Wordle or Sudoku, where you log in every day to play the new level. Somehow they went from having a great looking 2D game to trying 3D and have now regressed into as lazy of an art style as you can have. So yet, somehow this is the best looking game they've made in years. There are some things I like and a few things I don't. Actually, I mainly only dislike the now 10 star levels you must complete. And even then it opens the door for a lot of new levels. That's right guys, I'm about to actually be positive about a cut the rope game again. First good thing, you can play every level, even ones you missed. I can play every level from August, no problem. There's also a new theme each month, so September has a beach theme. Awesome! Seems like they will slowly introduce more mechanics as you go too, which definitely makes sense. Another great thing is this little replay they have after you beat a stage. You can watch the path you took and try to plan out your next try, or just remember how freaking epic you are. And the levels are fun! Crazy, right? People like this gameplay style? Who knew? I do wish the graphics were nicer, but these aren't terrible. And you can only play this with an active Netflix subscription, so it's probably not even available to a lot of the people watching right now. But if you want new Cutthroat content, or maybe something to play every day as part of your routine, then maybe you'll love this game. It's not for me, but definitely not the worst. Let's finish this list with a solid B tier. Zeptolab seemed like it was the anti-mobile game company around 2015. Six very solid games with consistent updates had been made at the time, and it was exciting to see what might come out next. Compared to the 14 games Robio had released, it was kind of refreshing. Plus they had other IPs like Pudding Monsters and King of Thieves. But now, in 2023, we see Omnom in every bland, nothing, mobile game schlock they can think of. I haven't even mentioned the 15 plus insane games that never got released or published by someone other than Zeptolab. It's just sad to see all these mobile game companies that once showed promise ruin their reputation is all. What's even sadder is I'm not even sure there are many people out there eating it up. In my research I found this Twitter account that was dedicated to keeping up with Cut the Rope news and they literally couldn't take it anymore and quit. They don't even like Cut the Rope anymore. I didn't want this video just to be bleh Zeptolab sucks because I wanted to mostly revolve around reliving through those first few games, but I can't lie, reading about their NFT push, especially when their entire audience is children, and playing through this garbage has really frustrated me. I do really want to make more videos about the series, but is it worth it to promote Zeptolab further than I already have? I'm not sure. I will say this though, those early years of the Cutthroat Up series were just incredible. I played every level in those first few games countless times, and I did enjoy aspects of their later games too. I want to be positive, so let's uh... Let's just not say much more about those spin-offs. Thanks for watching. I know it was bleak at times, but I hope you enjoyed a trip down memory lane with me. There are tons of weird and fun creatures in Cut the Rope, so if you want to see more, then that's definitely what I'd like to do next. You could have watched this video early over at my Patreon, you goofy little goofball. At least you can still access the tier list and make your very own. And if you join now, you won't miss out on my next early video, just saying. Join my Discord. If enough people ask, I might even make a Cut the Rope channel. Ooh. And thank you to my favorite non-boys of all. Roth One Finger, Cobalt Chrome E, Patrick Byer John, Hono Maki, Deca Knight 9000, Bright Streak, MD Switchy, Zoltan City, Kirby Fan Real 1992, Omegon, Selena Rayner, and Danielle Cornoyer.
And let's not forget our two newest members at the time of recording this, both in the $5 tier, which I sincerely appreciate. We have, of course, Daisy and Poop Fart the Second. If you want to be remembered, have a name like that and become a member of this channel. If you want to be a non-boy, then please consider becoming a member today. Oh, looks like I gotta go. I'm getting a call from a girl. So yeah, I think I'll take this. See you later. Hi mom. Yeah, I'll be home soon. Sorry I didn't text sooner. No, please don't take away my iPad, please. The pirate ship... The pirate ship appropriately... The pirate ship appropriately has... The pirate ship appropriately has... The pirate ship appropriately... The pirate ship appropriately has... <laughs> God. Fuck! The pirate ship appropriately has Captain Candybeard and bombs? <laughs> and bombs?